Did what? That wasn't the first thing we did. The very first thing we had to, I mean, we needed some kind of piece of information in order to be able to figure out anything in the future. JC? How many jumpsuit groups do we have from 12 to 4 in like 3 to 7? So we first said, well, let's try and figure out something, some kind of a pattern that's going on. So this goes down by 8, by 8, right? Uh, and the number of days that go by are four days. All right, that's useful. Four days pass. We uh, get rid of eight boxes, okay. as Carter suggested. Well, what do we do with that? And what does that tell us? Okay, so how many, right? like if we, we lose eight boxes, we, uh, we unload eight boxes, deliver them, I guess, over four days. The thing that's nice about this, and that's not so nice about the one that was written first, is that four divides eight, right? So this comes down to a rate of what? Change. Okay, yeah, a rate of change. But like the specific number is what I was fishing for. Oh. Ready? Four. Oh, wait, no. No, no. Negative two. Okay, negative two what? Okay. Negative two per day. Negative two boxes per day. So when it works out to per day, like a whole number per day, that is really nice and a little easier to understand, a little easier to work with. Uh, but, you know, we're going to move beyond that here today. So we're losing two boxes every day. Uh, on day three, we still had 12 boxes. We can use that though to figure out how many boxes are left anywhere down the line now. Anywhere we want to look into the future, we can decide that knowing that we're going to lose two boxes a day. Okay, so let's look at that. Let, let's try that for maybe day, how about day, I don't know, 10. I don't want to go too far away, day 10. So how can I use this information and this information to figure out how many boxes I have left that I still need to like, deliver on day 10? Right, so here on day three, we have 12 boxes left. All right, the next day, how many are we gonna have left the next day? 10. Why is that? boxes every day. And the next day after that. And then after that. And that. Oh look, we just we we count our way down to day seven. Right? How can we figure out how many are left on day ten? Mm, count down by two or three times. Okay, count down by two three times. Do we want to subtract two and subtract two and subtract two? No. You just do two times three. Two times three. We've used multiplication to speed that process along. So we can start with four and subtract two times three, because we need to go three more days. It's three more days until day 10. Does that make sense? Write that down. Three more days until day 10. Uh, so four, this isn't gonna make any sense. Four minus six is negative two. Now our boxes analogy is not so great. Like, how do oh, I someone bought boxes. In the someone paid for two boxes, but you haven't given them to them yet. Good. Okay, that's that makes sense. So negative boxes. Negative What's that? So the person has negative two boxes. So the person, yeah, they have negative two boxes. They paid, they paid money and they don't have their two boxes yet. Yeah, they're, they're dead. Kind of like. Or they get well, stolen. They're kind of in. You're kind of in debt, I think, right? Yeah. You're indebted yeah. to them two boxes. Yeah. Well, anyway, any any way you look at it like that, I think that's a good explanation. So we're down two boxes. So you know, in reality, we have to go get some more boxes and deliver them. Okay. So there we are, day ten, negative two boxes. We owe somebody two boxes that we don't have, but we have their money. Okay. Uh. So now we, let's write a formula that's going to 
predict for any number of days. Day number x. Okay. Uh, you can do this in so many different ways. Um, we could go back to day zero if we want to go back to day zero. We could start with day seven. Okay, and then figure out like if for the for day ten. How do I figure out this number that I multiply negative two by? What do you guys think we should do? Should we back up to day zero? Should we start at day seven? Yeah, day zero. Day zero. Day one. Yeah, day one. You like day one? I like day zero. Let's vote day one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Day zero. Oh, seven, eight. Day zero. Woo! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that a vote, Lane? No. No? I think one, one by one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, here's x, here's y. Let's back up to day one. We'll just do it in one jump to day one. Well, that's the jumping back two days, right? Yeah. Jumping back two days. Well, then I should go back four, four right? Sorry. So it's what? Sixteen. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it should be, yeah. So it should go, get, go down by four in this direction. So if we go in the backwards direction, it should go up by four to six. The 18 if it was zero, even though they won the vote, Tiana did it anyway. She backed up to day zero. Because someone else said it first. Oh, somebody else said it first. It's more quiet. They didn't, they just didn't hear it. <coughs> so whether we start on day one or day zero, it won't matter. In fact, let's start on day one. And then from there, as we have many times, we will derive the formula from day zero. Okay. So the number of boxes is represented by y that we have left to deliver. If we start out on day one, that means we have 16 boxes to start with. Yes? Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. I was going to say something else. Uh, from there, we're going to go up or go down in the number of boxes. We're going to go down, we're going to subtract two a bunch of times for however many days in the future we want to go. Okay. Well, we're starting on day one. This is going to be like you know, the 18th time we've had this discussion. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go, how many times are we going to go up to get to seven? Six times. How many days is it until day three? It's two days until day three. How many days until day ten? Well, it's nine days, always one less. Right? How many times have we... Said it's one less than a, a million. Okay. Not that, you know, not to shame you or anything. I'm just saying, like, it's been around. It's in the air. We have talked about this x minus 1 idea. We could have started with day 7. It's just that instead of 16, it would have been 4. Uh, still, we're subtracting 2. And instead of x minus 1, it would be x minus, what do you think? 1. x minus 7. x minus 7. Because we just, like, let's get rid of all those 7 days. We just need to know how many more days until the x to day. Okay? And so from day one, let's get rid of the first day, and that leaves how many days it is until day x, whatever that day might be. So there it is, a formula for finding the number of boxes on day x starting at day one. Starting at day one. But I can simplify this formula by doing what? Distribute. Distribute that negative two. We get 16, negative 2 times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 1, positive 2. 16 plus 2, since they're like terms, we can put them together, 18 minus 2x, and voila, there it is, 18. From day 1, or sorry, day 0, we have 18 boxes. We subtract 2 boxes per day times x days, because it's always x days to get to day x from day so that is the scenario where this nice thing happens. This nice thing that's happened time and time again so far that the change in the y value is divisible by the change in the x value. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So the, de the number of boxes went down by 8. The number of days that that happened in was 4. So that divides in nice round amounts into each day. Every day, two boxes were lost or two delivered, or somehow we don't have those two anymore. So, but we talked about this just ever so briefly last time. If you actually were to 
to sell boxes or deliver boxes every day, would it be a very good chance that it would work out that nicely that you always deliver two boxes every day? No. No, it's just an average, right? So in reality, if this was like a real situation, one day you deliver three, another day you deliver five, next day you're six, you don't deliver any, and, right? The average is it works out to two boxes per day that you're getting rid of, and that's why it's negative. So this next scenario is kind of like uh, showing us reality, because it doesn't work out to a nice whole number of boxes every single one day. So that you can't sell points, something, something boxes. Well, that's true. But the thing is, we're only making up these stories to help it make more sense. Okay? These formulas, they could produce decimals. Which is, that could be what it is. It, it, I mean, if you want to imagine that you sell a box and a part of a box, oh, even so though that's a like silly idea. Oh, so like a big idea. box and a little, little box. Or I like, guess. Or like a big box and you know, it's remember that the things, the, the stories we're telling ourselves with the X being days and Y being boxes of uh, Girl Scout cookies, just to help us understand what's going on, right? X is changing, Y is changing. We change it so that these decimal amounts make sense. Like, what if instead of days, this was uh, hours? And this was something that decimals made sense for. What can we have decimal of that makes sense? Oh, money for hours. So like dollars? Yeah. Yeah, your, your, what do they call it? Your rate of pay, right? Your pay rate. Uh, because it's a rate of change. It's exactly what it is, the rate of change. So let's figure out, you know, we might think, how many dollars per hour am I making here? Right. How do we figure that out? How do I figure out how many dollars per hour I'm making? I know that at hour five, I have nine dollars in my pocket. Okay? It doesn't mean that I made five made nine dollars in five hours, does it? No, that's terrible. You shouldn't be working right now. You should pay nothing. Nine dollars in five hours is pretty bad. But it doesn't mean that. Just because nine and five are matched up, it does not mean that you made those nine dollars in five hours. You could have made. You don't know that because I, to know that for sure, I would have to know that I had at zero hours, I had zero dollars. But we don't know that. I could have had positive dollars. I could have had negative dollars. Right. You owed. You work at a clothing store. You bought a bunch of stuff on credit at the store, and you were planning on paying it back as soon as you worked again. These things with negatives and decimals. It's helpful to make up little stories, but we don't have to. But the initial amount, when x is zero, could be negative. Right? I could be indebted to the place where I work, and then only after I work a little while will I be back up to zero dollars, and then beyond that, positive dollars. So just to help you make sense of that. To figure out how many dollars I'm actually making, some kind of a rate, like per hour, how do we figure that out? Can't just look at nine and five. You like have to see how many like times you go up to seventy-five and like from five to thirteen. Like I'd never be able to figure this out if I if if you just told me that at five hours I had nine dollars. I'd have to make some assumptions to decide how much you're making. You got to tell me later you had at what time you had some other amount of money. Okay. I mean, if I just told you five and nine, you don't even know if I'm making money or losing money. That tells me nothing. You gotta tell me what happens later on, or tell me what happened earlier. You have to give me some other uh, example of the situation. So at five hours, I had nine dollars. At thirteen hours, I had seventy-five dollars. That means that in how many hours? Seven, eight. eight. It's eight, right? Yeah. My my mental subtraction the math to go fastest. But should be eight. And this is how many dollars do we? Six. And then 66. 66. So we are making money, right? We're not losing money. It's not going down, it's going up. Are you writing this down? Yeah. Some free examples here. Might as well write them down rather than try and do all this work and not have anything to look back on. 
All right, so in eight hours we made $66. How do we figure out how many dollars per hour that is? $66 divided by eight hours. Okay. No matter what, that's going to break it down to dollars in an hour. Whether that works out to a nice round amount of dollars in an hour or maybe a decimal. What does that come out to be? 66 divided by eight. 8.25. Can we make 8.25 in an hour? Yeah, $8.25. $8.25 per hour. That's, That's okay. like minimum wage. Maybe right now, I don't know what minimum wage is right now. 750. Oh, 750? No, it was like 805, like yeah, a month ago. It's like 8. Okay, so it's, a, it's hovering around minimum wage. But anyway, that's the, the point is that that happens every hour. Now, well, if I work for four hours, those quarters all add up, don't they? Yeah. All yeah. those quarters add up to another dollar. Okay, so on your fourth hour, you make 25, 25, 25? 25. On your fourth hour, you make 32, plus the other dollar for so all those quarters. 33, look at this. See this fraction, 66 over eight? Let's divide them both by two. Divided by two, we get 33. And four hours. Look at, that's exactly what Carter just said. $33 every four hours. Eight twenty-five per one hour, $33 every four hours. $66 every eight hours. It's all the same. $8.25 cents. $8.25 cents for one hour. It's all the same. If we were to uh, go in chunks of eight hours, we'd have to go in dollars, like we'd have to add $66. If we were to move over four hours, we'd have to move up $33. If we move over one hour, we'd have to move up $8.25. Okay. They're saying over and up, making reference to like a graph we might draw of these points. Is that make sense to everybody? I'm going to put this point right here, 5, 9 on a graph. Might as well put it real quick. Four, 5, 5 hours, $9. If I move over 4 hours from then, 1, 2, 3, 4 hours, how many dollars did I make in those 4 hours? 33. 33. 33. So I'd have to move up 33. I don't have time to, to do 33, but that's 9. Right? I should make 33 more dollars, which puts me at So if I move over four hours, if I look four hours into the future, I should earn 33 more dollars, which puts me at a total of $42. Okay. This thing that we're talking about right now is the thing that we're having trouble with a while ago uh, that we needed to clearly take a different approach. I think it's paying off because now we're talking about slope of a line. Okay, The slope of this line is 33 over 4, or 66 over 8, or 825, 8.25 over 1. All of these are an equivalent slope. They move over 4 hours, move up $33, move over 8 hours, move up $66, move over 1 hour, move up 825, $8.25. If I were to draw a line between these guys, I can project this into the future. Just go anywhere on the line, and it will tell me the hours and the dollars. Hours and the dollars, just from that point on the line. But we're not needing to really worry about that, just giving you a vision of the future. Um, so at hour 47, we want to figure out how much money we have. So someone walk you through how to figure out at 47 hours how much money we have. Whatever you want to do, if you want to back up to some hour, you can start from hour five, hour 13. Kaden? Okay. So, you would, um, I would subtract 825 
five times from nine to go back to zero. To, to zero. So this would re this would uh, represent how much money I had when? Before. At when you just started. When you just started, like you walked in, like just as you Got punched your time card. Right you were then. In debt. You were in debt. I bet. Yeah. What? You gotta be. So when I walked in that day, how much money did I have before I started work? You subtract 825 five times. You earn a lot of debt. 825 <laughs> times five. A negative 32. We have calculators, right? No. no. Can we use our phone? Sure. But I think Jason's going to beat everybody. In the future, we, we gain 825 per hour, so if we go backwards, we have to subtract 825 every hour. And it's five hours to go back to hour zero when we started work that day, uh, or a week or something. Thank you, uh, Yes, we're now at negative 32.25, and you keep going, and what do okay. you do? Now, you do x, you can do eight times 8.25, so 8.25 times x. And then in parentheses. This whole thing in parentheses? No, just 8.25. Okay, just 8.25 in parentheses. Yeah. <coughs> minus. Minus? Yeah. 32.25. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do we agree? Why are we subtracting the 32.25? Because that's how much that's money we, we were in debt at. We were in debt, we have to take away that initial amount. That's how much we have to start with. What does this represent? This right here, the 825 times x. How far along hours you've been at? Again. How many hours you've worked and uh -huh. how much you've gotten each hour. So together, how many hours you've worked and how much you make every hour, when you multiply those, we get Well, 825 is the dollars per hour, right? Your and X is the hours. Yeah. When you your multiply money. dollars per hour by the number of hours, you get what? Your money at that time. Your money. Well, how much money you've earned, right? Mm -hmm. The money at that time, you have to take into consideration how much you were in debt. Sorry. Yeah. So you have to pay them back. Yeah, so you, you, know, you work a couple of hours, yeah. and you say, hooray, I've made, you know, I've worked four hours. I made $33. Do you have thirty-three dollars? No. no. Yeah, like, no. After, after you work, you did. Well, after you, you get your paycheck, well, pay you to them, but you get a don't. You no, get, how much would you have? You have seventy-five cents at that time. After four hours of working, you pay off the you know those three shirts that you bought, and you have seventy-five cents to your name. Where and you're three working has pays too much for shirts. Uh, well, they could be pretty much. Definitely, some places cost that much. Yeah. Bottom board. $32. Yeah. What costs more? Yeah, like. Oh, Jesus. Like $100. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this equation that looks like y equals mx plus b. Remember mx plus b? Well, it was in the past. Uh, y equals mx plus b, that's the equation. That's what an equation that makes a line graph looks like. If your equation, when you graph it, will make a line, it will look like this. And that's cool. Where this is our initial amount. It's how much money we had to start with. It's how many boxes we had before we did anything. It's our initial amount. It's our y-intercept. If I were to graph this on a graph, this guy right here would be right on the y-axis. Right there at hour zero, we have negative thirty-two point two five dollars. This guy is our we can call it several things, but on the graph it's called the slope. Carter's good about reminding us that it's the rate of change. Um, well, those are probably the best two most mathy terms we could use: slope and rate of change. And again, just to remind you what we talked about in this problem, this rate of change, you think of it in a lot of different ways, as uh, 66 over 8, 33 over 4, 825, 8.25 over 1. But typically, your slope, as we get into the practice of it, will look like this. The fraction in simplest form, 33 over 4. This makes it easier to graph. Rather than moving over one hour, moving $8.25 $8 up, in the y direction, we can move over 4 and just up 33, and that makes it so much easier to graph. Again, if you're having trouble, if you're not writing your notes down. How can it be too surprised? Let's write down some notes. Start right now, even if you feel like, oh, I'm behind and it's just hopeless. Start writing down notes. Right now, start now. And don't just keep not doing it. Write down some notes. All right, here we go. We were taking notes, we'd have at least two examples from today. If we start now, we'll have this one at least. This one example to look back on. Let's try. 15 hours, you get $21. Wait, in 15 hours, you get $21? Wait a minute. Did that happen in 15 hours? No. No. 15 minutes. Well, let's call it hours, hours or minutes. Did it did it happen in fifteen? Don't don't worry about the units. In fifteen no, hours, did we get twenty one? You had a negative number at one or zero. You're not in seconds. Okay, listen to my question closely because I don't think I'm asking it very well. So I'm just taking the thing that Carter said at the beginning. Just right when this thing popped up, he said, oh, in 15 hours you made $21. Let's just call X hours and, and Y dollars. Is that, can we say that from this, from this table? Like, what are we missing here? Did it happen in 15 hours that we made $21? No, Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Let's not get too complicated. Just because there's a 15 and a 21 there, does it mean that in 15 hours, Went up twenty one dollars. Oh, or maybe the stock went up. Twenty one dollars. Harder. That's just Arter. how much money you have. Okay, that's how much money we have. Is that how much money we made in fifteen hours? No. 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 It's just how much money we have at fifteen hours. How much money did we make per hour? We don't know yet. We just we don't know. Avery, did you have? I was going to say that I, we don't know if we did, or that's how much we made in 15 hours. What? I don't know how to say it, but like. So we can't, we can't just look at this thing and say, oh, in 15 yeah. hours, I made $21. Yeah, does it start at zero? Or yeah, does it start at zero? No. We don't know yet. I mean, we, we may be able to look at it quickly and say yes or no, but until you do some calculation, you don't know. Like. This, if I cover this up with my hands, this information by itself, how useful is it? No, not very Not a lot, especially for predicting the future or looking into the past. Just knowing that at 15 hours, somebody had $21, it doesn't tell us a lot. It does not tell us a lot. 
we have to know something else. Well, here's something else that we know. That at nine hours, we had $12, are we writing this down? Yeah. Okay, so how much money did we make? How much money do we know we've increased by? Brandon? Nine. $9, how do you know that? I added 12 and nine, and got 21. Okay, so you added 12 and nine, and got 21. Another way of 21 minus 12 is nine. It's all the same. <laughs> So we made nine dollars. Is it good to make nine dollars or bad to make nine dollars? Uh, uh, depends, depends, depends on how long it took. Right? If I made nine dollars in the time it took me to ask you if it was good to make nine dollars, that's not bad. Nine dollars in what, three seconds? That's good. Okay. So it depends. How long did it take? Six hours. It took six hours. It's uh, a hundred and nine dollars. Um about two days. Six hours to make twelve dollars. I would. Six hours to make twelve dollars, or six hours to make how many dollars? Nine dollars. If that was actually sixty dollars. If you make nine dollars in one second, I just work like one day and I. It could be six. I keep nine dollars every second. I get rich. Okay, so I'm pointing out, you know, it doesn't have to be hours. This could be nine dollars every. Six minutes, and it doesn't have to be dollars. It could be nine euros. Euros every six seconds. Nine puppies. Nine puppies. Every six days. Six days. Nine puppies every six minutes. Okay. So we're starting to see. The more and more of us are starting to see what we call x and y. It's just kind of arbitrary. It's up to us to make it up. All we really need to know is that this value is increasing, the y value is increasing, the x value is increasing as well. And so we see as, as we look in this direction, like into the future for x, the y value is also going to be going up. If we were to draw a line of this, it would look like that, bottom left to top right. So we call it positive slope, positive rate of change. Are we writing this down? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So 21 minus 12 over 15 minus 9 is 9 every 6. 9 whatevers every 6 whatever. It doesn't matter. Really, like 9 y's every 6 x's whatever y represents and whatever x represents. It's completely up to you unless somebody else is telling you something else. Okay. That's how much... Like, tell me about nine. What what is nine? Without using words like dollars and boxes and puppies. What's the rate of change. Number. We're close. We're like that's like half of the rate of change, sort of. But what is just nine? Is that a six? This is yeah. a six. Yeah. So this nine. What is what is going on with nine? Or what is it? Without saying nine. dollars. Without saying boxes. Okay. Nine is. I got Dalton can raise his hand for a minute. Nine is a number. Okay. Nine is a number. What does it describe about this chart? Does it describe X? No. It describes Y. Y. Evan, tell me more. It tells you how much Y is going up. Oh yes. Why? How much Y is going up? How much Y changed? Yes, he said. Oh yes. <laughs> so, it's hilarious. Uh, how about six? It tells you what? Um, how much y is going, x is going up. up? How much x is going up? Exactly. Well, over, because x will go up. It goes over. Right. Do you want to take a break in the hallway? Yeah. All right. Let's get in control of ourselves. Yeah, control. Said yes. <laughs> said the word yes in a bit of a whisper. I apologize, it was so distracting. So 9 is how much y is changing. Do you remember this symbol? Yeah. Or don't see how the triangle. Yes. In Greek, that triangle is a letter. That letter is called, does anybody remember? Nope. Delta. 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 Listen, you're getting a little lesson here. 
We like to use Greek letters because Greek letters start with letters in our alphabet and they describe what's going on. So delta starts with D. And D is the first letter in difference. Difference. Okay. And the difference between these two is nine. The difference is nine. So that's why we call it delta. It's the difference between the two y values. Okay. When I take 21 minus 12, right, subtraction, the difference, nine is the result. Y changes by nine. And x changes by 6, and all together, 9 over 6 is the answer you tried to give me a minute ago? Rate of change. The rate, rate of change. change. The rate of change. Yes. So the rate at which y is changing compared to x, 9 over 6. Or, we can simplify it to, to what? 9 over 6 can simplify to what fraction? 3 over oh, two. 2. We could write it as 1.5, but we'll soon abandon that for the fraction because it's conventional. Okay, so y changes uh, by 9 and x changes by 6. It's the same as if y had changed by 3 and x had only changed by 2. Like if I went from 9 to 12. 15. 11. If I went from 9 to 11, then the y would go from 12 to what? This is the y, right? And this is the x. It wouldn't make sense to have a higher number. Number six. I'm surprised. So. If, if x goes up to 11, which is a change of 2, a change of 2, then y would go up to what? So if x goes up by 2, y goes up by 15, that's the same pattern as x goes up by 6 and y goes up by 9. It's the same pattern. Uh, last thing, the formula would be, if we backed up to day 0, it would be 0. Oh, if we were started at day 1, it would be 0. Day 1, it would be 0? Think so? So we'd have to back up uh, eight, right? Go back eight, right? Which at a rate of three to two, so three to two times that eight that we go back. Right? This two cancels with this. This is negative four. Three times negative four is negative twelve. So it would be zero. Okay. So day zero would be what? Negative 1.5. And then 2 would be 1.5, and 3 would be 3. True. Yeah. So True. our formula would be, uh, if we start at day 0, negative 1.5 plus 3 halves, which is the same as 1.5, times x. Really, really have to write 1.5, then okay, fine, but we are gonna write them this way. Okay, thank you, uh, Noel, for today. Good job.